Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am Sylvia Bichanga. Our YouTube channel name is Corey and Sylvia Bichanga. So I'm here today with my friends, Ronnie and Liz. And you guys had asked for a more detailed um, video about them, about their business. I have them here today for you guys. So, Ronnie and Liz, how are you guys doing today? Yeah, great, thank you. You're doing good. Thanks for having us. Okay, so this is obviously also um, an interracial couple, the same as me and my husband. So I'm just going to let them say where they're from. Um, give us the scoop on who you are. <laughs> um, so I'm Liz, I'm 27, I'm from the Netherlands and I've been here in Kisumu for about six years now. Very good. I'm Ronnie and uh, I'm a Kenyan and uh, I live here in Kisumu together with my wife Liz. So Liz and Ronnie, how did you guys meet each other? When did you first see each other? We first saw each other on a party. Mm -hmm. Yes. We were both invited by a friend, it was a couple at the time. Uh, I got to the party around 10, 10 30 and I asked her like, could I also bring some of my friends uh -huh. because I didn't want to go alone. You didn't want to go alone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you came with the crew. <laughs> okay, you brought your guy. Yes. <laughs> Maybe I take you a little bit to the party. We uh -huh. met and we I really had a nice conversation with her and I found her interesting but uh -huh. it didn't look like we were going to to me like we were going to end up together mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I just so as a good friend, we exchanged numbers mm -hmm. and... Yeah. And he texted me the whole night, the next day again, the next day again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, and yeah, after two weeks we were together. Okay. And uh, wow. after three months we decided we're going to move in. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Wow. Mm. That's amazing. That's a great story. I love that. When you meet that person and you just feel like there's a connection there yes. and things flow smoothly. It doesn't take effort. You guys have a business and uh, specifically chickens, chicken feed, eggs, all the things. So tell us about your business. How did it start? The business is called Kenya Poultry Farmers Limited. Okay. That's the name of our company. Mm -hmm. uh, personally, I started keeping chicken in 2010. Okay. After my high school. And then uh, I went on with chicken and uh, went to college, uh, university, and officially decided to register the company in 2015. Okay. That's when the company was registered mm -hmm. and I uh, started trading as a limited company. And uh, we, were, we did business since 2015 and in 2016 I applied for uh, an entrepreneurship uh, grant wow. from uh, the Tony Lumelu Foundation program. Uh -huh. Tony Lumelu is a Nigerian billionaire that supports African entrepreneurs. Okay. So every year he supports a thousand entrepreneurs across Africa. Uh -huh. So you go through a vigorous uh, uh, application process. Okay. And uh, in that year, I think over 80,000 applicants made application and uh, they only chose a thousand and I was lucky to be in it and wow. we got about five thousand dollars for to, a grant to boost to, the to business. Start business yeah. Wow. So that's how I started. And you had your business going for about one year. Yes. Then it's when she came in the picture. Yeah. Okay, okay, that's yeah. interesting. Yes, but I was still going back and forth between the Netherlands and Kenya. I was finishing my degrees and then I went to South Africa for my masters. Mm. And then I came back and COVID was here and I was like, what am I going to do? Kenya was locked, mm -hmm. we couldn't go anywhere. So we decided let's work together and see how it goes. Mm -hmm. And it went well. So you went to South Africa? Yes. So there's a lady who commented, and I don't remember your name, I'm very sorry, but you said you're from the Netherlands and you're living in South Africa. So she was also in South Africa. So I find that very interesting. Yeah. So you came back, you guys decided to work together, see how you work as a team. Yeah. Yes, and then went from there. Went from there. Yeah. And it worked well, though we were fighting a lot. Yeah, it was very difficult <laughs> to work together like 
like as as yeah. my wife. Yeah. Because I knew her as my partner. Yeah. Like my partner in life. I didn't right. know her as my business partner. Business partner. So it, it got really difficult to uh, for, to work together from eight to five as business partners, and then when you go back home, then Again, you're still down. together. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I can, I can see that. You know, even the the cross cultural adds a dimension. And then when you have your wife and she's your business partner, then that will take a lot of communication and working together, which yeah. you guys do beautifully. Your business is doing great. Things are looking up. So thank you. Congratulations on everything that you've managed to do. Thank you. Right, so I have a few more questions for them. With myself personally being in a cross-cultural relationship, I have a question. How do you find it? How do you find it where you were raised a certain way, he was raised a certain way, and then you bring them together to create one unit? How is it for you guys? I think, especially in the beginning, it was very challenging. Because I was used to, you know, if we say by five we meet here, mm -hmm. it's five when we meet there. Mm -hmm. And then I'm there by five and Ronnie is nowhere to be found. And I call him and it's like, it's five. And Ronnie says, oh, you're there. I'm like, well, yes, because we said five. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we had a lot of, in the beginning, a lot of fights about that. And then the other thing that I would say is that he would not come home early. Mm -hmm. Like he would be working, going around, and I would come home from work and be like, where, where is he? And he would not communicate and just come home by nine or 10. And I'm saying, where have you been? I've mm -hmm. been worried, it's dark. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought you would be killed or something. Mm -hmm. And he says, ah, but in my culture, I don't have to explain to my wife where yeah. I go. <laughs> this all sounds very familiar, by the way. Very familiar. She's, she's talking my story. I'm talking yeah. your language, right? Completely, <laughs> completely 100%. <laughs> yeah, that, for me, the, those are the ones that really stand out. We're very timely and on time, and here things are relaxed. And you know, actually, after about five, six years of being here, mm -hmm. I've adopted. Today we came 30 minutes late. It's always late. Yeah. Yeah. It's never on time. <laughs> you know, the African time. I very much adopted the African time yeah. where I'm mostly late. It's true. Yeah, so I really had to adjust on uh, the time issue. <laughs> the time issue? Yeah. yeah. Because also working with farmers and uh, the field that we are in selling chicken, farmers are never on time. Like you set up meetings with them, they show up one hour, two hours late. So that kind of uh, culture built up in me and it was very difficult to mix it together when we met. Yeah, because I, 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 I used to run late all the time and to the point that she devised a plan when she wants to meet me she calls me like an hour ahead and she tells me that she's already there oh she's not even left the house no yeah. <laughs> still doing laundry like i'm there i'm, I'm waiting. waiting yeah like the way you structured organized mm -hmm. like the way you want things to go in a certain way you want to plan ahead mm. yeah things and are done chop chop yeah, like you plan things you want to plan things for next week or next month mm -hmm. you know as we just used to uh, doing things by by day we like, live day by day yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah so i decided that today i need to see these farmers mm -hmm. for today i don't know which farmers i'm not seeing to i'm seeing tomorrow mm -hmm. so yeah i really had to adjust mm -hmm. uh, to that and get to like the planning schedule mm -hmm. so that we can do things in a more organized way. Yeah. yeah. In Luo culture, mm -hmm. uh, men always want to take care of their women, mm -hmm. and like you're, you're the, like the little present, the little egg, and they're like taking care of you like that. But I'm Dutch. I'm raised in the way that independent. women do things. We are yes. independent. I I have a drill. I can make my own holes in the wall. I can yeah. paint my own room. Mm -hmm. I, I can, you know, I can just take care of myself. But yeah. women prefer to like. Yeah take care of myself, of, of me so much that yeah. sometimes it drives me a bit crazy. Uh, but then we talk and it gets better. Yeah. It's a bit suffocating. Yeah. <laughs> put on your sweater. I know when to put on my own sweater. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, I have a lady in America. She's uh, married to a Luo man. She tells me the same. She says that's the way that he feels like he's loving his wife. Yes. When she's able to be at home, he's the one taking care of her. He's the one providing for her. 
it's like their love language really you know yeah, they, like, <laughs> we, we really find it nice when we take care of our women like mm -hmm. we do nice things for you we bring you good things we even cook for you <laughs> yeah. which so is very rare yeah, yeah. that's rare yeah. for an yeah. african yeah. man to cook yeah. One thing that I've always struggled with, yes. like as a Kenyan married to a Dutch lady, mm -hmm. is uh, especially with the business, because uh, you know I started the business and she came to join after finishing her masters, mm -hmm. and uh, she wasn't employed yet in the Netherlands. So here people think that uh, this business was built with her bringing money from the Netherlands uh -huh. and suitcases so that we we build this business because like up to date people people still like uh, most people around this area where our business is they say oh that uh, you're going to the to the chicken company the mzungu company oh yeah. and he's on his side he's the one that did the hard work in yeah so team. it's uh but that is not uh, uh i it's okay for me if they say it, call it a Zungu company because it gets us popularity, which yeah. is okay by me and uh, yeah. we are a family. So, yes. what really gets so hard is when someone really thinks that you we started this business with uh, just uh, money, Zungu funds, Zungu funds <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. uh, splashed onto us, and yeah. them not knowing about the struggles, the determination. Mm -hmm the hard, hard work, work, the mm -hmm. sleepless nights that yeah we we've gone through together to yeah. get because at times we we buy our feeds from Nairobi from a company called Sigma Feeds and Suguna Feeds. Okay. So at times we offload these feeds because the truck drivers come overnight ah. and we offload these feeds as early as three AM ah. night. So you wow. have to wake up and come get meet the truck driver, you offload the feeds, all that is uh, behind the behind scenes, the no, scenes. No, no one sees that, yeah, yeah. so it gets very hard. That is one thing that, uh, yeah, we really struggle with. Yeah, yeah. Now the people don't see that actually Rani is the one that got this building up off the ground and got the foundation actually. It yeah. wasn't built on Mazungu funds, yeah. but he, he, he did the hard work and yeah. And also with the, together with the beautiful mind here, we, we build it together the to where it is right now. Yeah. yeah. You got it off the ground, she came in and you went to unlimited heights mm -hmm. together. This lady knows Swahili. As much as I know a little bit of the Luo, she knows Swahili so well. Almost complete. Is it 90%? 99%? 90? 90. 90. Okay. So how did you come to know Swahili? Um, I did international studies for my bachelor okay. in the Netherlands and part of that program was a specialization in Africa studies. Okay. So Swahili language came with it. So okay. I had a, a lady called Tirza from the Netherlands who spoke beautiful Tanzanian Swahili. Okay. So I learned it there for about two years and then I came here and I kind of perfected it. So with her knowing Swahili, I think we need to have a conversation that is in Swahili between the two of them. So, you talk Swahili at home together? Or you talk mostly English? Uh, we mix. We mix. It's a 50-50 mix? Okay, I'm, I'm ready for it. You're Let's hear this conversation, I'm intrigued. Okay. Yeah. Sawa. Habari yako? Mzuri. Ulia lala salama? Lala salama kabisa. Ulia ota? That's a lot. That's a lot. Wow. Yeah. We were saying. <laughs> yes. Um, he was asking if I slept well and if I dreamt. So I said today I didn't dream, but last night I dreamt that there was someone um, at the window staring at me. Oh. <laughs> last night I dreamt the world ended. So oh. it's, uh, dreams are strange. But wow, 
that's nice. Like even my luo, I can't carry a conversation like that. Like in my mind, that's a lot of Swahili. Your families. Have you met her family? Have you met his family? Many, 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 many times. times. Yeah, yeah okay. I've met her family. The first time uh, I really? met your family, I went to the Netherlands. Oh, so you went to the Netherlands? Yeah, six okay. months after being together. Uh huh. Yeah, and uh, yeah, she introduced me to the parents. And uh, I like the family. Uh, she has a very nice family. And uh, yeah, from there I went to the Netherlands. That was my first time. I think I went back there uh, four more times. Okay. Because I've been there like five. Yeah, something yeah, like that. Yeah, five times and uh, also uh, the parents, your parents have also come to Kenya to twice, yes. twice to nice. see my parents. Uh -huh. yeah, so both parents have met. Yeah, and so I've also met his family many times. They just stay around like 20 kilometers away from Kisumu. Yeah. Yeah, so we know each other well. How did you find the Netherlands, by the way? It's, it's cold and uh, yeah, it's a very beautiful country. Mm -hmm. uh, it has many rules. I will not want to live there uh -huh. because the rules are oh. just too much. The rules are too many. Yes. And so when you visited, you stayed for how long? Uh, usually I stay for about three weeks. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, it's a very beautiful country. The people are nice, mm -hmm. very talkative. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but Kenya is home. Yeah, and uh, lots of food, good uh -huh. food. Yeah, because yeah. you come with Christmas, so yeah. obviously you eat a lot. Oh, yeah. you go over the holidays. Yes, yeah. 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 So just be in the house, meet friends, mm -hmm. uh, have dinners, mm -hmm. yeah, which is very nice. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, well, that's And I also great. learned something very interesting about the culture. Is like, maybe also I can say with your culture because you get to share with one another while you're having dinner mm -hmm. like you as a, you, as you a family you talk yes yeah, you don't turn up the music <laughs> it's <laughs> your from the TV. yeah yeah, yeah it's a time to bond yeah to bond as a family and because usually when we have dinner here in kenya also with my family and maybe friends you just serve food and you start eating and everyone goes quiet mm. during meal time mm. yeah. yeah which is quite something that i really liked um, tell us about your business and what you do. People would love to know. So we run a, a poultry company called Kenya Poultry Farmers, uh, KPF in short. We work with smallholder farmers all over Western Kenya. So we supply them with farm inputs such as chicks and feeds and medicine for the chicken. And then when the chicken are ready, we collect them back and we slaughter them and sell. So as of now, we sell chicken, we sell broiler chicken and kimiendi chicken, we sell eggs, um, we sell chicken parts such as wings, breasts, drumsticks, um, and so we also sell the inputs, so the feeds for Sigma and Suguna, and we sell, sell chicks from uh, Kenchik and Kuku Chick. We have a team of about 15 yeah. people 15. at yeah. the moment, and still growing. So what we like to do is we like to work from people um, to work with people that have not worked in an official setup before. So most of them come from very humble backgrounds. Mm -hmm. So we train them on the job, and as they grow, um, they grow with us. The company grows. So we start with a, a basic salary, but when the performance is good, we raise after six months, every okay. six months, uh -huh. as a way to like empower them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so I like that's that. also been saying like a lot social. Uh, enterprise we also work with uh, the ladies from the slums okay because uh, they are the ones who slaughter our chicken and in return we give them like the chicken parts the heads the okay. legs and mm -hmm. the gizzards so uh, they can go and sell it back and home. sell them i love that yeah yeah. And, yeah also we most of our farmers are youths mm -hmm. women elder people mostly youths and women uh, we train them on how to keep chicken, those who don't know, and then we uh, supply them with the inputs, mm -hmm. just like she said, and we make sure that we provide them back with market, because mm -hmm. uh, that is a very difficult aspect for them. Mm -hmm. Some of them don't know how to sell their product, 
do marketing and all that. That is uh, why that is why KPF. That is where we come in as a company. Like one of our top goals here at KPF is to increase livelihoods mm -hmm. for local communities. Mm -hmm. So, so we work with farmers in very underprivileged communities, further away from town. Um, yeah, so that's really at the core of our business. Mm -hmm. To yeah. create jobs, in short. Yeah, yeah. jobs and yeah. e like stable income. Yeah. Yeah, truly really, uh, put a smile on our face to see like a farmer in the village grow from keeping 100 chicken to 200 to mm -hmm. 300. Mm -hmm. We have farmers that have grown from even 50 to now they're doing 500 chicken. Wow. Or some to even 1,000 chicken, which is very, very impressive. impressive. Yeah, wow. So for your chicken, um, is it like a certain, is it like organic or is it not in that line of organic meats really? Is it? It is uh, quite organic, I would say, like compared to production in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. um, it's small scale mostly. Mm -hmm. um, it's like, it's an open house where the chicken are staying, so there's a lot of ventilation. Um, they get organic foods, the ones mm -hmm. that we have here. Mm -hmm. It mostly consists of maize, soybeans, mm -hmm. things like that. Um, and then we also really look at the medicine that a farmer administers to a chicken. Mm -hmm. So because we don't want to slaughter at the point that the medicine is still in the body mm -hmm. of the chicken. Mm -hmm. So that is very important to us as well. Yeah. Just to make sure that our meat is quality. Yeah, and we strongly advocate for not like the use of uh, excessive antibiotics. Mm -hmm. Like we we strongly uh, advise our farmers not to use antibiotics when not necessarily when not when the birds are not sick mm -hmm. like we just tell them only use antibiotics when the birds are sick and mm -hmm. as prescribed by a vet we work with local agrovets who mm -hmm. have been very supportive with, to us mm -hmm. uh, and yeah. that is how we guide our farmers to mm -hmm. make sure that the end product the chicken meat is quality mm -hmm. tasty healthy uh, healthy yeah. yes yeah. well that's amazing um that you don't have a thing where they're just prescribed antibiotics as a precaution, but you use it as only when needed. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Because you see in the region or in the country, people like to use a lot of antibiotics mm -hmm. because they want to secure their investment because keeping chicken is quite expensive. Mm -hmm. So they say, okay, let me put it on preventative antibiotics all through. Mm -hmm. That is not healthy because we as humans consume that meat and we'll build up resistance against antibiotics. Mm -hmm. So we really try and avoid that as much as we can. Wow. The eggs, our eggs are yellow yolk mm -hmm. and uh, one thing with our eggs we ensure that we collect them uh, every every week, mm -hmm. yeah, every so seven days fresh. so that they're always fresh. Mm -hmm. we, the ones that we collect from Monday we make sure that they're all sold out by Sunday so that we bring in a new stock. A new stock of eggs, yeah. Yeah. nice. Whatever we do, we try to put the customer experience first. Mm -hmm. So by healthy products, by making sure that we always have stock, at least we try. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, the other thing is that we train our staff very well on customer care. Mm -hmm. So all of them are trained excessively, I would say, on mm -hmm. customer care, how to talk to a customer, mm -hmm. how to handle a complaint, things like that. So we want to make sure that everyone who comes to KPF gets that positive experience. Yes, yes. We get a good wow. customer experience. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow, that's wonderful that you have the the ability to train them and to teach them and you're teaching them skills that long after you're not here they'll still have them. So that's amazing. That's amazing. So tell me more about like you said you have about fifteen workers. Um, what are some of the things you you teach them when you say you're teaching them um, good business ethics in short? One, uh, I usually train them a lot. One on presentation, like the way they look. Mm -hmm. Second, uh, communication. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, like yeah. also, like thank you for your order, things mm -hmm. like that. So we try to train them on like proper communication mm -hmm. skills for the customer to be appreciative to the customer. Yeah, that's so important. That's so important. I know when I first came to Kenya, I actually had a bit of an attitude every time I went to the supermarket and I bring my things up to pay. I'm completely ignored. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> They scan all my food without saying anything. Uh, every once in a while I'll get a hi, how are you? And it's always a shock. Um, and they scan all the food. They don't tell you your total. They just sit there. 
for you you're supposed to look on the screen finding your own total even though it's their screen it's their job you're, you're doing like looking I used to get so upset and I used to tell them like greet your clients when they come up to you and like you're the one to tell me your total today is whatever the total is like just talk but it's something they are teaching yeah. their workers to do is to communicate that I love that yeah. so yeah. that is the major thing I think that we're focusing on and secondly working with procedures and systems mm -hmm. um, teamwork Mm -hmm. The value of working in a team and not just doing your own things. Yes. And yeah. Uh, yeah. We try to have like a team lunch with our staff like okay. once a month. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is just as a, besides our weekly meetings. Mm -hmm. So the team lunch tends to bring the uh, staff together. Like mm -hmm. maybe sometimes we do brunch, we ask each one and every one of us, each and every one of our staff to. Uh, bring, bring something. something like some small food like mm -hmm. no matter how small it is like within someone's budget mm -hmm. and then they bring it we set up a table we eat as a family yeah so our staff uh, we have a manager she's called Carol and then being assistant with the management trainee she's called Anne mm -hmm. and then we have uh, the lady working for us at the shop she's called Faith Mm -hmm. And uh, we at the moment we have four delivery guys, mm -hmm. and then a uh, team captain called Joe Joseph, and uh, there is Rama Ramadan and uh, Jarvis and Evans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, we have uh, three farms. Uh, there's one farm in Tomboya, and there's another one in uh, Dunga, mm -hmm. and uh, one in Ahero. Okay. So we try to keep these funds at different locations mm -hmm. so that before we used to have our chicken in just one farm mm -hmm. and when we were hit with diseases, like we used to lose everything. So you mentioned you have delivery drivers. Um, do they deliver everything? Like you can order a chicken, they'll deliver it to your house. Eggs, they'll deliver it. Everything. Yeah. Okay. Chicken, eggs. eggs. Feeds, yeah. medicine, everything. It does go at a fee because of the petrol prices right now. Yeah. Um, but it depends on the location of the customer. But we try to deliver as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, also to our customers who uh, mostly farmers who live like outside the, uh, uh, the city, especially in uh, Bondo and Usenge mm -hmm. and uh, Ahero, we have. Uh, or other shops in those locations mm -hmm. to help serve our farmers better. Okay. Yeah, and we also, other than chicken, we also sell fish feeds. Oh. Yeah, because yes. we live along the lake. Uh -huh. Kisumu is just close to the largest yes. freshwater lake. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you sell fish feed as well. Yeah, yes. So we also sell fish feed to fish uh, farmers mm -hmm. in the lake. Yeah. And I saw some dog food. Yes, dog food. Food. yes, we also sell dog food. Okay. Uh, the dog feed is from uh, Bravo Kenya Limited. Okay. Yeah, Bravo. We, we buy all our feeds from Sigma Feeds. Mm -hmm. And uh, Sigma produces, uh, other than poultry feeds, they sell, uh, they produce uh, fish feed and dog food. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which are uh, Sigma brands. Okay. Yeah. How long have you worked here? I've been here for about seven months. Okay, you've worked here for seven months and you're working as office assistant. Yes, and also a management trainee. Okay, in management training? Yeah. Very good. Uh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, so what are some of the things that you have learned since you're working here? Since I came to KPF, I've learned a lot. Mm -hmm especially about the customer service uh -huh. it is something i never knew before like how so, to treat customers yeah. and talk to them yes now since i came to kpf now i know to that customer relationship uh -huh. yeah 
at least I've learned to build customer relationship, uh -huh. not only the customers but also the people outside. Uh -huh. um, you know, mm -hmm. one thing leads to the other. Like yeah. How to treat one year itself, the other is outside. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the things you're learning here, you don't only use them here, but you use them uh, yeah. when you go out, when you're around. What can you say about this job compared to other jobs that you've had in the past? You see, here in KPF, it, it feels more family. Mm -hmm. yeah. You feel more like a big family. Yeah, it feels mm -hmm. more of a family because we are always together. Like, mm -hmm. if you need help, mm -hmm. Iman can help. Iman mm -hmm. can chip in. Mm -hmm. like, no one will still know that's your job. Mm -hmm. Iman can help. Even mm -hmm. our directors, mm -hmm. they are so nice. They mm -hmm. chip in. Mm -hmm. Whenever we need the help, they are always there for mm -hmm. us. Yeah, so and it feels you, more of a family than work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's more like a family unit than work and you can trust each other. That's yeah. great. Um, we wish you all the best Thank with you. working here. And what is your favorite thing about your job? What do you enjoy doing the most? Talk to clients and they're happy. Uh -huh. So I also love it. Yeah, you know when you talk to a client and they are happy that your training has worked. Yeah, yeah it has <laughs> so made a difference. Anytime the client says, okay, I'm happy about that, I'm also mm -hmm. very happy because yeah. they are happy for it. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's great. I love your spirit and that you want to work and that you want to make the clients happy. Um, that's great. So, Anne, we wish you all the best. Thank you. Can you <laughs> may you work here for many years. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for Thank you. being willing to come today and to be interviewed and to give your, your aspect of working here at this business.